What's happening? This is John Sue, Just Slabbering, episode two. I'm here today with DJ Tez, Belfast very own. It's good to have you on, my bro. What's happening, man? You're right. I'm good, I'm good. It's good to have you, bro. So, I first met you, what was it? It was over 10 years ago now, wasn't probably, it? Probably would have been that, actually, yeah. When I was, when I was working on uh, sort of local radio and stuff. Blast 106, wasn't it? Blast 106. Um, and you you asked me I, to come in for an interview. I think he came down and spit a few bars and that. Didn't I did. He? I did. I was doing loads of mad. I remember it around the same time I'd done Stephen Nolan and all. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah, I went yeah. and wrote a disc rap to him. You're, you're about Stephen Nolan? Yeah. See, so like I would appreciate that. Yeah, it's still on. <laughs> you it's should still, do. You should do another one. It's still. I know. I actually might do a real disc track now about him now because um, it was with the BBC. Um, they asked me to come and do the Stephen Nolan show. Right. And then I was a wee bit like, oh, you with me? So then, um, and he says, like, do a live rap. So I, like, watched a few things about him then and then just slated him, like, you know, and went yeah. and done it on. <laughs> but if you type it in, John Sue, Stephen Nolan, it comes up, the wee I have, rap. I have to check that one out for yeah. sure. So, but I remember then, so the first time I met you then, it was Blast one, 106. That's when, I think that's when, like, commercial, like community radio was in a good place, like, and radio was kind of, like, a little bit more... It had the hits now where you see now obviously the likes of people have a choice yeah. they can go to their spotify they can go to their phone they can listen to any song they want when they want yes and obviously back then it wasn't so yeah you can you can really do that then no i know but it was it, obviously then you know radio was good like we had plenty of people tuning into shows even in that community radio i was like doing a show and getting like 100 retweets some shows do you know what I mean? I would never have got that now if I was even if I was on the biggest radio station in the country. I know, I know, bro. Uh, but yet, if you had one of the <clears> biggest <throat> podcasts in the country, you yeah. had to have over a hundred tweets. Like yeah. it shows you the the media has changed now. Big time. It is true. Changed. Sure, even like like you said, I remember when I done my fire in the booth and all. It was BBC Radio One. Yeah. You with me? And it was like the biggest thing, Sick. you with me? But even now, Charlie, he's just went off on his own with Apple, hasn't he? That's it. And now um, it's still as big as ever, if not bigger. Yeah. You know, because yeah. it's, um, it's on the platform now, you know? It's true. That is true, like, bro. So um, do you still do radio at all? Nah, I'm done with it. I, I mean, to be honest, I, I, when, I, when I moved from community radio, which I loved, like, it was, obviously, I was running an R&B show. I was the only person running an R&B show on community radio or local radio or any radio in Northern Ireland. Yeah. Um, Hicks did it years and years ago. Um, but then obviously the format at Cool changed. He was doing more of kind of dance shows. Shout out DJ Hicks, by the way. Um, and yeah, like when I was doing it back then, it was it was more fun. Like I could, you know, I was doing live mixes. Like I, have, I used to carry my turntables. Like obviously I didn't get paid for community radio. Yeah. That show that I did, like I wasn't getting paid for it. Yeah. That was just out of my own love. Um, for, you know, trying to be a presenter and trying to better myself. Yeah. So I used to carry my turntables up like fucking six flights of stairs, <laughs> like two of them, big techniques. And then I used to do that live show every week and they used to present at the same time and DJ. But it was authentic and obviously people knew that when they were listening to it. It's not like the way, you know, you tune into a radio show now and you, you see like everything's, you know, coerced or whatever. Yeah. Then I was actually mixing, scratching live, you know, I would make mistakes, I would make fuck ups all the time, but that's just, it was live, people enjoyed that. Do you know what I mean? They like the live aspect of it. Of course, you know obviously. What I mean? And then when you fucked up, you just had a laugh and said, oh, I fucked up there. You know, we don't say it like that. Like, but yeah, yeah. Don't swear, but... Nah, yeah. of course. No, it is true. I always thought that as well. Like, you know, the... um. So how did you... Like, I love... I used to love the radio. You know, even, like, the Charlie Sloth show and all. Yeah, I'd yeah. always tune in for it. Yeah, you know Charlie I mean? Sloth, like... that Charlie Sloth, the Westwood show, obviously. Yeah, yeah back, Tim Westwood, you know, back in the day. Definitely Saturday Nights was the young yeah. BBC Radio 1. And then... Yeah. Sloth came over and, and took over, like he did. I remember Tim Westwood as well. There was, um, because I lived in Manchester yeah. and um, there was no rappers from Manchester who was getting any type of it was all like from London, yeah. And then there was the first rapper from Manchester to go on the Tim Westwood show, Shifty, right? Have you ever heard of him? <laughs> no. Gangster, bro. Sick. Gangster, he was like he was a sick rapper from Manchester and he got was in a terrible car crash then. Right. And um, he stopped rapping, you know. He's done with it. Yeah, he nearly died, like, Fun. very nearly died, like, but um, he was like the original. Still on YouTube. If you go on YouTube and type in um, Tim Westwood Shifty, and yeah. you'll see him. 
I'll have to check that out. Yeah, it was gangster shit. Westwood. Man. So how did you... How, when did you start... Want, no, you were going to be a DJ? Like, yeah, was it in school? Tell you the truth, right? So this is, you're going to like this one. When I first started... Kind of, I always listen... When I was a kid, I was always into the music, obviously. Me and my, one of my pals, his name was Jeff at the time. We were probably the only two people, I would say, arguable, that I knew that had an extensive CD collection of like all the top R&B artists, hip hop artists, like, you know, uh, we were just like, he would get 20 quid every Saturday, I would get a tenner, his mum and dad were a good bit, few, bit richer than mine. We used to go in town and we used to buy CDs from HMV and then he had a, bur a CD burner on his, his yeah, thing. Yeah, So he used to burn the album he bought for me and, his, <laughs> and yeah, vice versa. Obviously. The next thing, you know, we had so many CDs and yeah. albums upon albums. But we were going like Donnell Jones, like, you know, 112, Diddy, Biggie, Tupac, anything that came out then, like CD-wise, we were buying all the Eminem, Eminem albums. Of course. D12, like, what else? Like... Uh, Obviously, the fifty cent was a bit later, but we had we had everything. So then, obviously, Wu Tang, Wu -Tang Clan, we had we had yeah. we had them all, and like all the all the ja Rule albums, like even back then, like they were all big albums. Yeah, like, I love Vinny and yeah, all. Yeah, class. I know. I seen that. Did you see the the Billboard's hundred greatest rap or fifty greatest rappers of all time? Yeah. Did no, you see I that? I didn't even see it. No. So they just released it. Right. Um, I thought it was a bag of shit. The list. Was Not it? Gonna, ja Rule wasn't even in it. No, that's crazy. Ja Rule wasn't in the 50 greatest rappers of all time. He doesn't he, get enough credit. Like. He posted a tweet up saying, there isn't 50 rappers that are alive that can do what I've done. And I thought, you know what, you have to give the man his prop. I think it was Eminem that fucked Ja Rule's thing up. His beef with Eminem. Yeah, yeah. Really just fucked oh, yeah. Ja Rule. I say, anyone that ever beefed with Eminem, it's they've all done. just been destroyed. Did you, you, see, did you ever <laughs> see his, uh, his verses against uh, Fat Joe? Ja Rule's verses against Fat Joe? No. So Ja Rule comes on and it's like... Uh, I think uh, Jadakiss did one with the yeah, locks. Jadakiss, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, one, obviously, Jadakiss, he smoked it like. Yeah, so it's basically like I, I do my hit and then you do your hit. Yeah. So it's like a, who can a win? hit battle. Yeah, yeah. But no yeah. one wanted to go against Ja Rule. Yeah. Because obviously he's he got had hits. Banger hits <laughs> he's got hits, mate, for days. Yeah. But we're talking about like number ones. Like, we're yeah. not just talking about like, you know. So, so Fat Joe went with. Head so Fat to Joe head. goes head to head with him. And then Fat Joe loses, and he then he, he he takes the L. He's like, "Yo, I lost," but I no one else wanted to go against this guy. It's my little brother. Yeah, you know, big ups and whatever else. But I still, uh, I tell you what, though, if I had to pick, I'd have to give Fat Joe more like credibility than Ja Rule for the simple reason that Fat Joe discovered the greatest ever rapper of all time. You know who that is? Who? Big fucking pun, man. Oh, yeah, big pun, yeah, yeah, big yeah. Big pun. Yeah, yeah. You know about big pun? He always raps about big pun, yeah. Big pun, well, I'd say... So my top... I'd say the, be I'd say the best, the number one, my number one rapper of all time, I'd say is Tupac. Tupac Shakur. Yeah. For everything. You know what I mean? For what he was. He was a revolutionary. His mum was a Black Panther. He was born in jail. Yeah. Um, he, he, you want to listen to some of his speeches. It's crazy. That it's, it's powerful, like, powerful lyrics to his songs. Like. Bro, and he was 24 when he died. Yeah. You know what I mean? He had albums coming out years. I Like, he was something special, Tupac, and he was an actor. He was, yeah. He was sick, bro. There was no one that could smack no. deal with him. And he was very revolutionary, but commercial. He was like the hip-hop's version of, like, Bob Marley or something. You know, he, like, he transcended hip-hop. He truly did, you with me? Yeah. So I love Tupac, bro. Tupac is by far the greatest. And then I'd say the second is Big Pun. Yeah, You know, yeah. and Big Pun was the first Latino rapper to go platinum. Yeah. And um, Big Joe found him. Yeah, they were yeah. um, Big Joe was known as like a ghetto superstar and um, he pulled up in the hood and he went into a shop and there was a gang of them all stood there rapping and Big Pun was one of them but he was called Big Moon Dog back then yeah and then he said to Fat Joe yo listen to my bars and all started spitting you with me and Fat Joe just went yo and then that was them then you know so, some of them records some of them old records that he was on are unbelievable too like I, I still play them in the warm ups in the clubs like yeah, you know, I don't want to be a player in that. Yeah, I don't want to be a player yeah. no more. Yeah, I'm true. not a player, I just fuck a lot. Yeah, you hear his yeah. flow and all them yeah. records are classmate. Yeah, he's too sick, bro. Big pun. He's too sick, bro. He's the sickest. Dead in the middle of little, 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 did we know that we riddle two middle men who didn't do diddly. Oh, oh he's too sick. G'd up, bro. Yeah, definitely. I have to give props to Pun, bro. I love him. He is the sickest. He died in 2001 from obesity. It's crazy. That's how he died, bro, you know. One of my favourite raps from him, he says... Um, 
I'm trapped in this huge giant cage, trying to savor these few dying days I have left of the former flesh before I'm sent in my grave. I'm trying to persuade my mind to be brave and not give death the satisfaction of seeing me dying afraid. So I rise from the grave, singing church songs like it was Jesus Christ or up a pom pom. Oh, I see G up, bro. Gives me goosebumps, bro. Big Pun was too sick. And that's what I love about him too, that he was Latino. You know, yeah. he was the first Latino rapper to go platinum, you with me? Yeah, yeah, Puerto yeah. Puerto Rican he was. Gangster, bro. Too G up. Yeah. Uh, so who's your favorite? Who would you say is your number one rapper of all time? I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm influenced by a lot of them, obviously. Probably... This is, I wouldn't say he's the best rapper, but my personal favorites are the, the likes of like 50 Cent and stuff. Yeah, I love 50 Cent. Because bro. Like 50, 50 Cent is one of the best. He is. Uh, but as a more of a an influence on my life, just because you can see like how, you know, motivated he is in business and everything else that, that surrounds 50 Cent, like, you know what I mean? So yeah. I'd probably say 50 um, is probably my favorite. Probably my favorite. Like. You know what, bro? So when 50 first came out, I didn't, I, uh, you know, I was, uh, it's funny, you always sort of resist new music, even at the time. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I was like, no, it's all about Tupac and fucking Wu-Tang and, yeah. you know, all the ones that were already out. And then when 50 came out, I didn't really, I I didn't, feeling yeah, it. I wasn't feeling it. But um, I think because he came off, he came off the back of that Eminem um, hype yes, train. of course he did. And then when 50 came out, like, people don't really know, like, the newer generation haven't got a clue. But when 50 came out, it was a new wave of like fame when yeah. that Get Rich or Die try, try an album dropped there was nothing like it Yeah. even you consider all your biggest rappers right now there hasn't been an album that's came out that's been bigger than that bro I'm not gonna lie to you it's one of the best hip hop albums of all time it has to be right. no it is it's militant bro and you know what it's funny when he first came out like you said he was on the back of the Eminem hype train I just seen him as like oh this is Eminem's yeah. um, new sign you know like Yellow Wolf or something Yeah. you know he'd be like a one hit wonder or something <laughs> you Wolf. know uh, you remember Yellow Wolf <laughs> yeah. I like the track Yellow Wolf done with Eminem yeah. did you hear best friend yeah that, I can't remember it's like a Christian song right Eminem's rapping about being a Christian just fucking like nice. he loves Jesus and that's who the best friend is Jesus you know right. it's a mad track like but um, Yellow Wolf's a bit weird no? like you said they were a bit like gimmicky right. but that's what I thought like 50 Cent was at first but then you drew then we, yo you the album, do you know man. what was scary about 50 Cent bro as well he was like Eminem in respect of like you couldn't fuck with him, bro. You couldn't no. try and battle 50 Cent. No. Remember he went and fucking, who was it, Rick Ross's baby mum and all? He went and took her out? No, yeah, bought her Ross's shit. Yeah, no, nah, he's crazy, no. he's and, too and then he, he arguably ended Jarrell's career too. With yeah, he did. Going on. Nah, he did. I watched the thing the other day, came up and he was exposing Jarrell and saying how, you know, what Jarrell, his problem was is he was a good-hearted boy. Right. And he was a Jehovah Witness. Right, yeah, yeah, He used yeah, to yeah. go around knocking on people's doors. He says, that, he says that on one of his uh, mixtapes or albums or something. Yeah, <laughs> and he says there's nothing <laughs> wrong with that. It was yeah, yeah. Like that yeah, he's dead funny, bro. <laughs> Yo, you don't fuck with 50, bro. See when it comes to... See the way he even dissed fucking Floyd Mayweather or not. Yeah, he doesn't give a fuck. Yeah, he says, um, read a page of Harry Potter. And there's, then he says, no, read Dr. Zeus instead. No, he's too there's, um, there's a funny interview, actually, on... Um, on, I think you can watch it on YouTube and it's like I think it's one of the guys from Run the MC I can't remember who it is and um, <laughs> they say like 50s with Eminem and they're filming I think they're they're doing they're they're filming like uh, in the club or something yeah. before it comes out and Eminem's there and 50s there and they said that Suge Knight walked into the video shoot Shark Knight Suge Knight right yeah. and everybody they weren't just scared of him they said they were terrified of him what do you call him Suge Suge Knight Shug Suge Knight Shug Shug Knight right yeah. so um, so said, he walks in he shug. walks in with his crew and then 50's like uh, he runs back in grabs an Uzi and he runs back out with the Uzi and he starts laughing and he's like, oh, these ones, these boys won't come around here no more with the Uzi. Like, yeah. And he, this guy from MDMC was trying to think, it's like, is this guy, he's crazy. Yeah, like, because yeah. he, he's been shot nine times already. Course, yeah, he doesn't yeah. fear death. He just yeah, thought it was yeah. funny that he, he's going to scare these guys out of the building. Yeah, yeah. But anybody in their right mind who have, have a sense of fear be like, no, there's about 10 gangsters just walking, I could get shot. Yeah. But he's running around with an Uzi by himself yeah. laughing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Nah, no. Militant. But I have to give him props, bro. He was raw. He was raw 50 cent. And I said he was really about that life as well, like when No, he was, well. yeah, 100%. Did you watch his biopic, his movie? 
get Richard Dyer. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. Fucking sick, Sick bro. (laughs) So again, I wasn't like, I wasn't uh, overexcited about the film, Mm. and I was thinking, ah, even like the Biggie film, I thought it was all right, but uh, you know, biopics in general, like even did you see the NWA biopic? No, I don't think so. Yeah, so I watched that, and I don't know, it's it's, it's okay, like it's all right, but get rich or die trying bro is fucking yeah. belting yeah, it's sick mate you know it's real good he bro he walks in and grabs that mark and he just throws in 50k cash and just drives off like sick bro I said I'm going to do that one day he had Asher <laughs> D in it as well didn't he Asher yeah, D Asher was D, in it yeah. well he said that they went into a shop in Manhattan one time and they were filming was it Top Boy or something or something they were filming no it was in the, it was in get rich or die trying and he went in and he bought this watch and 50 cent went back into the jeweler and he says look I've got this and he was like Went there and he was like, what the fuck is this? You just sold my friend. Yeah. And the guy was like, oh, I'm sorry, and whatever else. And then he says 50 left that shop that day and bought everyone on the set. That's just how wealthy he was. This fucking Jacob watch. It was I like heard that. 100 yeah, grand yeah. a piece or something like that. Yeah. And then Usher D said that a few years later, things got tightening at the sale of the fucking yeah, watch. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. I've seen <laughs> yeah. that. Um... I've never liked Drake, me, like, you know, his really? music. I've never really liked his music. I remember first time I ever heard Drake, bro, he wasn't even out. And um, my mate showed him, mate, and he said, hey, this guy's going to be the biggest rapper and all that. Yeah. I was thinking, nah, bro. Like, I just couldn't vibe. But I loved what Drake done Yeah. for Top Boy. Did you hear about that? No, I didn't see it. So Top Boy season one and two was on Channel 4. Right. And it was sick, bro. I watched Top Boy back in the day and I loved it. It was the sickest show ever you with me bro yeah. season one and two I, I need to get on it I haven't, I haven't watched you've never I, seen I, it bro so I, I can't I sometimes I just can't switch off at night because I work that many late nights anyway yeah you know not I mean? gonna so, lie to you bro Kano and Asher D bro sick next level some of the best actors I'm telling you uh, Kano's portrayal of Sully bro it's like it's fucking Oscar worthy. I'm telling you, bro. Kano was gangster yeah, with it. Kano. But them two seasons, they became like cult classics. And um and that was it. They disappeared. And everyone was waiting for a third season and it never came out for like a, a decade. Drake watched them, watched season one and two, just chilling one day, and said, um, got in touch with Asher Day and says, yo, where the fuck season three and all? And they laughed and said it's never come out. And Drake went to Netflix. And got Netflix to sign up the third season. That's crazy. So it was all like through. And then they, they called it like season one of Top Boy. And they called the first two seasons Summer House. Oh, okay. You right. know, so that's what they've done then, you Just know. Just it up. No, yeah. that's sick. Yes, yeah, Netflix done that with a few shows from Channel 4. Did you ever watch Black Mirror? Nah. Never seen Black Mirror? Nah, good. No, it's more than good, bro. It's one of the most scariest sh- things what ever. What is it? Like a, a doc, uh, so do you know what a series? Black Mirror is? Black Mirror? Yeah. No. When you turn off your phone, right? Can you see yourself in that screen? Yeah, that's the black mirror, bro. Right, it's a black mirror. Right. When the when the screen when the screens are all off, it's a black mirror. Okay, right. And um, ancient witchcraft. I thought, some, I thought something fucked up was about that. It is. When you showed me that mirror, I was yeah, like, exactly. He's gonna well, do a trick is. or something. Well, no, well, there is no <laughs> trick, but I'll tell you this, bro. Ancient witchcraft. They used to use a black stone or a black mirror. And they would stir into it to put a chant, uh, a spell on people. Right. And um, and they would turn them into like a zombie type state. But it's funny now that you think that the whole world are just constantly stirring into black, black mirrors. Mirror, yeah, true. Do you know what I mean? They're all just walking are around. Are you so superstitious into... like that about spirits and goose and shit? Not superstitious, bro, but I do believe in spirits yeah. and all. Yeah, Have definitely. you had any mad experiences like that? Yeah, too many, bro. I've too had many. a few fucked up things happen to me. My like dad, some. my dad is a preacher, and my dad is like the exercise people I've seen. I've, I've witnessed exorcisms, you know, when I was a kid. No I mean, way. real life exorcisms, and the guy like s- s- slit his own throat and stabbed himself with scissors, and all. wrote a song about it. Fucking it was, hell. yeah, it was crazy, bro. I've seen a lot of mad shit, bro. That is cr- that is crazy. Um, one of the wor- one of the weirdest experiences was on Halloween one night. There's a place in um, just outside Manchester called Alderley Edge. Right. And it's all like um rich affluent area. And I heard that in, there's like a cliff edge, a big forest, and then a cliff edge. And I heard that there was like a witch's cult that would meet there every um, Halloween. But a lot of like um, celebrities and like um, politicians and shit would go there too. And it was like a big satanic, like, you know, meeting. 
Right. So me and my mates, when we were like 16, said, let's go there and like, you know, catch them and all, you know? So we went down. We went down, me and, me and my brother and our two mates. One of them was on the run from the police at the time. Right. And we had no money. We both got, we all, all four of us got on the first train. Alderley Edge was about 20 mile away from where we lived. Right. And two bus, two train dr drives, and we got on the first train with no ticket into the centre of Manchester. No inspector came. And then there was the second train, and we all got on it. And the ticket inspector came asking for tickets, and we all pretended to be asleep. And I thought, this isn't going to work, because all, they always kicked us off, you know. The ticket inspector walked past, just looked at all four of us and walked past. And then, tickets please, tickets please, did everyone else. And didn't ask us. Next thing, the train stops at Alderley Edge, and we gets off. And we walks up, and the police were circling the place as well, because the police wouldn't let anyone get, get, get into the forest, you know, on this night. And there was big cars and all driving in and all, and we were, we were running up the road to get in. Once we got to the... Once we got to the edge of like the forest, and there was a there was a tree and a fence, and we could see the forest in front of us, and there was like a weird jingling and all, and we were like going, and before God, bro, this is the God's honest truth. We, my brother jumped over the fence, and then as I went to jump over the fence, my phone rang. It was about one o'clock in the morning, and my phone rang, and I looked at my phone, and it said no signal. It said I had no signal at all, but it was my dad calling. Right. And I answered the phone and went, hello. And my dad says, Johnny, where's Adam? And I went, he's here. And he went, put him on the phone. And I put my brother on the phone. And my brother and my dad said, where are you? And Adam says, we're in Alderley Edge, about to go into the forest. My dad said, I just woke up out of my sleep. You are in grave danger. You have to get out of there. Before God, this is real. My brother looked at all us and he goes, my dad says, we're in danger and we have to get out of here. And we went, right, my dad says, I'll meet you, where are you? I'll meet you at the train station, get back to the train station. I'm going to come and get you. He got in the car. We ran like fuck. We ran. And then um, when we got to the top of the road, we all heard this noise and we turned around and we seen these things in the middle of the road. And the first mate who was on the run from the police, he just thought it was the police and he ran. And my brother ran. Me and my other mate stayed and I looked and it was like four creatures in the middle of the road. They were coming towards us, bro. <laughs> I'm not what? even lying. Before God. <laughs> before God. And then we ran off and I seen them. They were like trees. And I actually said to my mate, I said, they're not men, they're trees. And then I realised <laughs> they weren't trees and they were like coming towards us. That's and this crazy. was on Halloween night in Alderley Edge. And then we ran home then. And then um, ran back to the thing my dad collected us, you know. But, um, yeah, I've seen a lot of spiritual things, bro. A lot of spiritual yeah. things, you know. Do you believe in God? I do believe in God, yeah. Yeah? And I'm, I'd say I'm spiritual in some way, and I do believe in spiritual things, and, yeah, I think I do believe in some kind of energy. I don't know what I'm believing in, but I believe in something. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I've had a few experiences myself, but th the stories <laughs> I can't say of, I can't say on this, like... No, of course, bro. So some some mad like some mad stuff. Some might get locked off. It's crazy. Nah, I know, bro. <laughs> I know. So, like I've seen, I've had a lot of mad experiences with that. Even like you know, just all types of shit, bro. You know what I mean? Like yeah. growing up, I've seen a lot, bro. And then, you know, I became I became a Christian and all when I was sixteen. Right. And then I stopped. Um, uh, you know, I didn't seen a lot of like madness and all in the church. You with me, bro? Yeah, of course. So like I I never really like like tradition. Even like for example, um, like a you know like Protestantism. You see, like you know the like you would just say you're a Protestant or something. I always say like first of all, the word Protestant literally means protestant. Mm -hmm. They're protesting against the Catholic Church. You with me? Yeah. So I'd never ever call myself a part of a religion that is named after a protest of another religion. <laughs> yeah. You with me? Like, just make up your own religion or something, or just call yourself yeah. a Christian or something, but a protestant. Yeah. And I'll, no, bro, I don't protest anyway. I don't believe in protests. I think pe peaceful protests are foolish. I don't think that's ever dealt with the problem. I yeah. think it's revolution that needs to be done. Yeah. Revolution, you know, and it needs to be taken by force. Freedom doesn't come by asking your oppressors for freedom. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It no. doesn't work, bro. No. You know? Definitely but um, 
I've always believed in God, but I don't believe in like religion, you know, the, the you know, like tradition, the tradition, even like, for example, um, Jesus, you know, the, the, the white image of Jesus Christ, you know, that you think of with the long hair and the beard and the white guy. Mm -hmm. It's not Jesus Christ, bro. Do you know who that yeah. was? That was the Pope's son. Right. The Pope's son was called Cesare Borgia. Yeah. And it was Pope Alexander Borgia's son. And he was a cardinal bishop. And his, and the Pope got him painted as Jesus. And his, like, if you type in, go on um, Google and type in Jesus Christ, Cesare Borgia, and it shows you the picture, yeah. you know, and you'll see his real picture. That's who you see as, know as Jesus it's an today. It's an interesting uh, subject, actually, because you think about it, like, you see the stereotypical Jesus on a cross. It's like, it's this white guy with kind of, like, brownish exactly, hair. Bro, it's mental. Like, the chances are, and he's really pale, chances are, you know, it was it Jerusalem... Exactly. Like whether say that Jesus grew up or whatever, yeah. chances are he was probably dark and yeah. tanned, you yeah. know, swarthy skin yeah. at least. It's mental, bro. So, you know, so it's absolutely know. mental. And then like there's a lot of like white Christians who like hate, you know, like are very racist against Middle Eastern people yeah. and all. They're all racist and all they against are, them. Yeah, yeah. But yet, the, and they think they're Jesus is some white guy, like some white European um, guy from Rome. You know what I mean? But he's yeah. not. He wasn't. He didn't have long hair or anything. He was more Arabic. You with me? Yeah. In fact, do you want to know something funny as well, bro? This is an interesting fact. Um, do you know what language Jesus spoke? Jesus spoke. Hebrew? No, yeah. he spoke Aramaic. Right. Right? And do you know what the Aramaic word for God is? Allah. Right. So that's Muslim. But it's not Muslim. But the word Allah in, in itself literally is Aramaic for God. So whenever Jesus was talking about God, he would use the word Allah. You it's crazy, me? isn't it? It's crazy, bro. It's crazy. As I say, well, as I actually say, speaking of that, that Andrew Tate converted to as, as a Muslim. Yes, I've seen that. What do you think of Andrew Tate? I... I'm gonna get cancelled like every <laughs> All my gigs gone. <laughs> I like Andrew Tate personally. Um, although he 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 sucks people in by saying things that are a tad controversial. It's just the way he words them. Yeah. Um. But most of the things that he says is actually is quite factual. Yeah, hundred percent. Um. And I I kind of like the I I I like the honesty in this modern day world. Yeah. You know, especially when it comes to like politics and stuff, I like guys that are honest sometimes. Of course. Do you know? And obviously, yeah. Like I personally, uh, I like him. I mean, I can relate to a lot of the things that he talks about. Yeah, I do too. I like um, <clears throat> I like the relationship with his brother. Yeah. You know, I like their like camaraderie. Yeah, oh, they're brilliant. And the there's, gangster, there's, bro. There was a, <laughs> there was a one you can watch it on YouTube. Is like <laughs> Trist, you know, Tristan Tate. He drinks fucking Red Bulls by the bucket load of yeah. day. <laughs> and he goes, I'm the fucking Red Bull King. Yeah. And he goes, you're not the Red Bull King. He goes, this guy's the Red Bull King. And as this guy chins... <laughs> you sound like the Massacre <laughs> <accent. laughs> As this guy chins like seven Red Bulls, mate, and like, as a two or three minutes, I don't know. So he goes, I, he goes I'm going to be the fucking Red Bull King today. So they line up these Red Bulls and film him drinking all these Red Bulls in three minutes. And then it's like the Guinness Book of World Records. So he owes he the, 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 the crown for drinking like, uh, like three, eight Red Bulls in like two minutes or something daft like that. So, and then he wins and then he goes and celebrates and he, he walks over to the fridge and goes, Christian, what are you doing? He goes, I'm going to celebrate. I'm going to have another a Red, Red Bull. Bull. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, but I don't rate that though. I hate Red Bull, bro. Do you know what, you know, an ingredient that has in, in Red Bull? Taurine. Have you right. ever heard of taurine? No. T-A-U-R-I-N-E. Taurine. Okay. And it's What's bile that? scraped from a bull's stomach. Right. Fuck. That's an ingredient in Red Bull. That's why it's called Red swerving. Bull. That's why it's <laughs> called Red Bull. Taurine. Right. All these ingredients, bro. I've seen that as well today, but the new Prime drink, you know. Do you see a Prime drink? That's crazy as well. Like, it just looks like it's going for crazy money. Like, kids are asking for it. And I've seen someone was putting up there, like, some boy was selling them on Facebook for £12.50 each. Bro. <laughs> I was like, well, for, what the fuck do you get for 12 What does it do? Yeah. I want to know what's yeah. so good about it's that literally drink. that there that you're drinking, that water that you're drinking with like about um, seven or eight spoonfuls of sugar in it. Right. It's like sugar water. You I kind of drink? understand if it was something like, do you know if it was like a real fucking health kick or something? I don't know. It just To me, it just seems like another energy drink. No, Is check it? this. It's not even an energy drink. Bro. Check this. I think I screenshot it this the other night, did I? 
Uh, there was a, what do you call it? Sure, yeah. Yeah, I should have, um, I should have screenshotted her. I seen this thing the other night saying all the side effects that's in. It's like dip, dip potassium, whatever. There's some mad shit that's in the prime drinks. Right. You want to read all the side effects that it has for children? Confusion, nausea, and um, stomach cramps. You shouldn't really be giving kids like under 12 fucking energy drinks anyway. Bro, I'm telling you like this, they don't, yeah. They don't, they don't need to be introduced to that. All they need is fucking what I was drinking, their water. That's yeah. it. Nah, it is, bro. I, I, I know I'm a big fella. Like I was, I was hooked on sugar myself, but sugar is literally like cocaine for children. You know, yeah. that's what it is, and it it's is. a cane. You know, there's cocaine and there's sugar cane. True. You know, and it looks pretty much the same, and it has similar effects. You watch a child, you give a child sugar, and then observe it, bro. It gets on like like it's just like someone sniffing coke. They're all manic hyper yeah, and yeah, all. Do you know what I mean? That's True. what it is. It's a cane, and um, and it's dangerous, bro. It's so 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 dangerous, bro. I'm trying to come off the sugar. My mum and all, my mum like single-handedly like saved my dad's life, bro. She started like cultivating her own um, like cultured foods. So Thanks. she has like, she makes her own kefir and kombucha. Have you oh. heard of kefir and kombucha? No, no. So uh, kefir um, and kombucha, they're both, um, they both have a scoby. A scoby is a symbiotic colony of bacteria and yeast. And um, it's what you use to like make a probiotic yogurt, but it's a live probiotic yogurt. So like, you know, when you're sick and you go to the doctors, first thing that the doctors do, anytime you're sick, what do the doctors go? Antibiotic. You need antibiotics. You with me? But, and what that does is that destroys all the biotics in your system. You with me? Like the, all the bacteria, good and bad, all the bacteria in your body, that's why it depletes you. And then obviously you're supposed to regenerate and start from scratch. Yeah. But that, most of the time, that's not what your body needs, bro. Your body needs probiotics. You with me? So if you're a bit sick and that, I'll give you probiotics and that keep, that strengthens all your good bacteria mm -hmm. and fights off all the bad. You with me? Rather than just depleting you. Now you see them yogurts, probiotic. Yeah, but this is, and again, anything store-bought, bro, it's all, you know, it might say like, but it has to be living. So you know the, the kefir, my mum has these kefir grains and they are alive. She literally like cultivates it every single day and they grow and expand and like um, multiply. And um, she makes this kefir, bro, and you can like, it's gorgeous. Bro. Have you ever had live kefir? No. Bro, I have to bring you some. You have to make it yourself. Then it's like, what you do is, um, looks like we like porridge. Like it looks a bit like cauliflower. Right. Weird, like weird wee grains. And then you pour in milk and then you put it, uh, like wrap like a cloth around it and leave it to ferment. Outside, out of the fridge, just leave it in a dark corner, um, leave it to ferment for 24 hours. And what happens is, as all the kefir grains eat all the fat and the sugars out of the milk and then transform it into something completely different, which is the probiotic yogurt. It's fascinating, bro. That's it's a crazy. fermented like yogurt drink, you know? But it's uh, the, honestly, bro, I was sick the other day, I had like, um, you know, like sore stomach pains now. And um, have you ever heard of sauerkraut? Sauerkraut, no. Fermented cabbage yeah. as well. My mum makes sauerkraut, bro. And she, I was sick as a dog and then I, I had a bit of sauerkraut juice and all. Just sorted the belly clean out, bro. It's like, there's a lot of like, I believe f food is your medicine, you yeah. know? And I don't believe in pharmaceutical, uh, like, you know, uh, anything pharmaceuticals, bro, I'm against fully. You with me? Yeah. Like, uh, I, I don't think that, doctors in that nowadays, bro, they don't give you, um, solutions to your problem. They give you painkillers and maskers, you know, things that'll hide your symptoms. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. that's not what you need, you no. with me, bro? That's why I get dead angry with hospitals and all. Go into hospitals, bro, and you think, this is where you're supposed to go to get healthy. It's the yeah. least healthiest place in the yeah. world. I feel sick walking in. Uh, I hate it, bro, I, I hate know. it. And they're pick your mask on, you need your mask, and I'm I thinking, know. what? I walked out, bro, last time I went in, there was, I was being sick, bro, in accident in the emergency at the COVID times and we're like, ah, put your mask on and I says, I'm literally being sick. What do you want me to put the mask on while I'm, I'm being sick? Like, what on. are you talking about? You know, uh, yeah, yeah. mental shit, bro. It's just so, so stupid, you know? It was there a few times this year with the little one. He was sick now a couple of times, like. Um, so, yeah, we had two or three long weeks actually in hospital this year. Not this year, sorry, last year. Um, but thank God he's all right. Like, you know, it was nothing too serious but it did get to the stage where you're kind of going like and what it was is that the, 
the doctor actually, funny enough, never the GP wouldn't prescribe him an antibiotic. Yeah. For he had a sore ear, then this sore ear just fucking literally no joke man it looked like another head on the side of his head see behind his wee ear it just swelled right out like that there and they were saying he's only three they're gonna have to cut him open they're gonna have to operate and stuff me and his mum were distracted because we're like it's gonna have a bad scar on his head and stuff and then eventually the antibiotics did kick in and the swelling started reducing slowly but surely I think fuck though we were fucking freaking out, but I hate the hospitals as well. Oh. Like, it's, it's the worst place to be. Like no, them here in February, I remember. Staff I... and all were very nice at the time, but just you're never comfortable sitting in the hospital. Like yeah, you know I mean? it's fucking. I remember I took my wee daughter. To, um, well, I lived in Spain for like five years, but one of the first times I took her over for the summer, we were back flipping into the pool like a hundred times, you know, diving into the pool and all. And, Next thing, I got water in my ear. I couldn't get it out, you know, like oh, pool wow. water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my wee daughter had the same. Bro, we both had the worst ear infection I have ever had in so my it's... life. We were both on antibiotics, lay there, like crippled for Apparently about a that's week. Pop- proper sore, like. Oh, bro, it was one of the worst pains we've ever had I've in my life. I've actually had one th- touch wood, like, but. Bro, I don't even think my ears ever fully recovered after. Seriously? Like, I feel like water gets into it a lot quicker even now. Uh, Do you know what I mean? That could be wrong. What's, what's wrong with my wee one? He always just pulling at the same ear all the time. Yeah. My wee nephew suffered badly from, like, a bad ear infection as well as a kid, you know? Like, real bad. But, um, yeah, man, it's heavy stuff, bro. It's heavy stuff. So, um, have you ever been to Spain? Spain, yeah. I mean, I played in... Um, I, I used to play in... Uh, I go playing a beef every year, obviously. Yes. Play uh, Ocean Beach. Do you, bro? You play in Ocean yeah, Beach? It's a, yeah. It's a sick spot. Have like. you met Gary Lineker? Gary Lineker? No, I'll not Gary. Gary Lineker. <laughs> Gary Lineker's <laughs> the frig He's the, the <laughs> walkers, the Chris uh, He's the football guy. So, yeah, Wayne Lineker. Wayne yeah. Lineker. And one of the brothers. Yeah, the other No, brothers, they're yeah. not. Yeah. I didn't even know So there's know a meme going about, he says that, uh, <laughs> it's like, uh, Wayne Lineker writes, uh, Gary's hosting the World Cup. My man of are trying to find my flip flops because <laughs> he's off his nut, obviously. Oh, <laughs> sick! But I didn't know he yeah. was um, Gary's brother. And now you say it, though, they do look similar, don't yeah. they? Yeah. Well, he's a part owner. Um, I see him every year. Yeah. No, he's a cool guy. And yeah, he's a cool guy. I love, I love playing there. It's a great spot. I had some great memories playing there. I've been playing there for about nearly ten years now. Yeah. And um, it's great to go out and, and spin. Um, so back out starting at May. We do the starting parties there in May. And then it goes right through to October. And I do one a month every every month uh, throughout the summer. Yeah, it's not my scene, bro. You know, the um, the other nightclub. I've, so Danny was in IB and yeah. he says to me, come over and all, you're going to love it and all. So I came over I came over, and we were all there. And he goes, right, we're all going out and all tonight. But I had just been traveling and I was exhausted. And I said, bro, it's not my scene. I said, I'm going to get my head down and I'm going to go to the beach in the morning. I wakes up in the morning, they're all fucking off their kites. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm That's away not, to the beach. Listen, anything, anything goes in the beach. Like. I said, like, I'm away to the beach, bro. Fuck you. Um, <laughs> yeah, so like, no, I play there. And then um, I played in Marbella a good lot as well. So there was like Sissou Boutique is another place I played. And then there's a couple of nightclubs out there in Marbella, uh, Aqua Mist and stuff. And um, there's another one called Mirage and stuff. All places that I like, play and stuff. And then Sissou got burnt down just around about the COVID time. Yeah. I was actually out there. Funny enough, we were one of the lucky ones to get on a flight and get to Spain. Yeah. Because their restrictions were a little bit... Oh, I know, bro. Fuck, bit, tell more, me about more it. More relaxed than here. We yeah. Could, over here, you couldn't even go and get a sandwich around. I know. But um, walked down and like the whole place was burnt out. But I had some class memories. Like, there's a couple of times I like, supported, actually supported K- Kano in, um, in Sissu, yeah. He, Sick, did yeah, you, bro? Yeah. Colin Francis was there as well. No, I had some cr- cracking memories playing in them places. Like, done some great gigs out there. Did you? Know, you haven't been to the Cali Cave though, have you? I haven't. I'm gonna go though. You need to. I'm gonna go. I, I I am gonna get a trip out. Danny's mentioned about going a couple of times. Like, yeah, you definitely. I've seen some of the like videos of the guys that been out there, and I've seen obviously Charlie Sloth and stuff was out there with you and that. Yeah, we got Meeks over first. Right. So we got Meeks over. No, it was um, I see Narco. Some rapper from America, fuck knows, I've never heard of him. Like, Danny got him over, and then we got Meeks over, and then we got Charlie Sloth over, and we got Bissett and Robbie G, and then we got uh, Jordan McCann. We've got a load of people over to it, like, you know, so yeah. it's going well, bro. You got Skepta over here, didn't you? Yeah. Back in the day? So I would have been about 2011, I think. Right. That's how far far ago that was. Sick. Um, 
we booked Skepta back then and um, I think that was like that was one of the intros that like probably around about the time when I first started DJing like it was a bit before that I'd been DJing before that at friends parties and stuff but like way back then um, we booked Skepta and it was crazy man like fucking when I think about it now and I look back obviously now Skepta's fucking international fucking artist yeah. back then he like the scene was very underground yeah like we were on his albums like um back then like you know that was the kind of stuff that we would have just played in the house and that but like we booked him and then like went to pick him up we brought him to nando's yeah party with him and my, my, i was sitting in nando's having a fucking peri peri chicken and like people were coming over taking pictures of skepta like kids and stuff it was crazy and then um we brought him to the box at the time. We ran this event called Facebook Fridays. Me and another guy called Walid. It's a, a good friend of mine. When I first, like how, far, how I actually I originally started DJing was, uh, I started, I forgot to mention this earlier, I actually started rapping. Right, what? <laughs> that was crazy. Can you remember any of your raps? Yeah, right, show me one in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely not. Never anybody else. I'm never going to show anybody. Right. I'm like, but you know what? So that that's actually how I, uh, it's funny, man. I'm laughing even thinking about some of the stories. But um, he was he was one of the guys I started rapping with. But then it literally later materialized, and I was the DJ, and then he was the MC. So he was like my hype man, so to speak. Yes. Um, but yeah, we ran this event anyway, um, Facebook Fridays, and we booked Skepta. I think at the time Skepta cost us about five grand. Yeah. Right, five grand for Skepta, like yeah, it's of course, just, of course, it's just mental. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And, yeah. But he was he's going through a weird phase. Do you remember he brought that song out called Amnesia? Yeah. Somebody remind me. Yes. <laughs> that was a bad time yeah. for yeah. them songs. But yeah. back then they were kind of cool. So <laughs> yeah. Um, we, we brought him through and yeah, we've done a sick event and I brought him all around Belfast and stuff. So like that was one of the first big Was gigs. he a cool guy? Eh? Mate, lovely fella. Even when we brought him to Nando's, like he paid for everyone's Nando's. Did he? Yeah, and, of course. It was nice like. Um, and yeah, like his management was proper cool. Sam, his manager. And then Maximum was DJ came with us. Uh, I always rated Skepta, funny, I remember his, um, his Tim Westwood freestyle, remember that? Yeah. Tell the youths them gone again. And then them yeah. gone again. Oh, I think about them, 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 them gone again. Oh, he was sick. Uh, well. there's, there's one um, he does, and they're all on the street, and he disses, he disses Wiley in it, actually. Yeah. I don't know if you, you'll be able to say it, it's like a boy better know freestyle. Right. And Jamie's on it. He's probably angry. He's like, do you want to spit? What was it? He's like, uh, when I'm on the market like an X6, when you're on the market like an X3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> on me, like, you know what, probably, bro? Probably, probably really, angry. Like. I never really listened to like much of their stuff, but I'll tell you what, that JME, he done a, a, he done a Pokemon song. Did you ever hear that? Nah. And I don't even like Pokemon. I've never too. liked Pokemon cards or anything. I was too old for it, me. But he done a Pokemon song that goes, I want to be the very best. And then he kicks in and raps on it, you no know. Way. And there's a video to it now. Shut it's up. actually fucking po brilliant. Pokemon song. Bro, type it in, JME. Um, the very best. It's a belter. I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. It's fucking class. But um, always rated Skepta. The best thing I loved what he done as well was with ASAP Rocky. Oh yeah, the Praise the Lord track. Too sick, bro. That's a sick track. And I always rated that. You know what? Um, because Skepta as well, he gives he always he give homage to um DMX in the track. Yeah. You know, and he even when he started to rap at first, I remember thinking to myself, Ra Skepta's using like a DMX flow in this. And then he even says in it, I listened to X, I peeped the game, you know, and he's yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. the snake and the rat and the cat and the dog and do all that's he's sick. Do you know what's crazy actually? Well, I play that song and most of my DJ sets actually if I can slot it in there. I usually play that. But like do you know he's actually he's doing gigs in Ibiza now as a DJ? Do you know that? No. Skepta. Like I'm on about some of the prestigious House events, yeah. Like yeah, yeah, I'm all yeah. about like the coolest fucking house DJs. Yeah, this is no like dickheads playing. Like yeah. he's playing along because it must be like an underground thing. But it's so mad. I seen he was playing in DC Ten, which is which is like in, in Ibiza. That's like one of the most prestigious places yeah, to yeah. play. Yeah, of course. But I mean, but he's not playing like. But he's not. He's playing house music. He's not yeah. playing like fucking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The shit that he would do at his own concerts. Of course, that. he's a DJ. Yeah. But, but I suppose you know, when you're that big, you can beg, you can, you can get into anything, couldn't well, you? Apparently, he started off as a DJ. Yeah. And then what happened was he got his record collection stole. He got all his, his CDs stole, the record stole. So that's when he started rapping. Yeah. 
That's what when I listened to a story about Skep Day from like years ago. Apparently, that's actually how he started. So he actually started off as a DJ, and then his brother was always rapping, and then he decided he was going to rap. Like yeah, because Jamie's his brother. So yeah, yeah, I know that. I know that. I've listened to a few Jamie tracks. My girlfriend, she plays a lot of their tracks, and all they're sick. You know, they like them. They see another, like a lot of people talk about like. UK rappers now, I, like or like you know the guys are influenced. I always think of him. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Because that was my but, guy. Who was your favorite UK rapper then? Skepta. Skepta, I say it, hands down like Skepta. Yeah. I like Jamie as well, obviously. Yeah, see, I they were more like grime though, weren't they? Yeah. You know, so I when I was like when I was coming up, like I loved um, grime. It would have been more grime, yeah. Yeah, see, I loved more like who who did I love for, like from the UK? Klashnikov. Yeah. K, lash your rash, clap, neck off, split you in half like a gun blast from Lennox. Never heard that. Yeah, no, I have actually, yeah. Yeah, Kalashnikov and Skinny Man. Skinny Man, I remember Skinny, skinny he Man. He did that song, I ain't trying to be no big thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You see, I know all that shit. That's a, yeah. That's a, that's a, no, there was a documentary on him. For fucking Sex on, documentary. On like YouTube, I remember. We tried that. to get him over here, he let us yeah. down, big time. Yeah. Absolute done us dirty, he did. Um, we done the Four Fours hip hop show and um, my mate, had a who I were running it with, he had the link to him. So I got logic over. Have you heard logic from yeah. London now? He's my mate, he's like a revolutionary rapper from London. Okay. He's probably one of my favorites. He definitely has got the best UK rap album of all time, I think. It's called Spectator, the album by right. Logic. You need to listen to it. It's sick. But we got him over, headline skinny man, day of the show. Skinny man rings up and goes, oh, brav, I miss my flight, brav, I miss my flight. Oh, no. So I says, oh, shit, see if there's another flight out from London today. Later, boom, there was another flight. So we, um, my mate messages him and says, there's another flight later, should we book that for you? And he goes, yes, book that for me. So my mate booked him a second flight. He just didn't get on that either. No. <laughs> I just, said, oh, just bro, off. if I ever see him in real life, like I'll say to him, you rat, bro, you fucking done us dirty there. But um, Logic come over and he smashed it and Meanie come over from Manchester, you know. But I love Skinny Man. His album, Council of State of Mind. Yeah. Sick, bro. I remember Sick. that back then. Like, I, I, I would have had all them. There was another guy, what was his name back then I was listening to? Um, Fallacy. Uh, fuck I know Fallacy yeah yeah I Black know Market Fallacy. Boy is Fallacy's my so, mate though I, I knew yeah. him so um, Fallacy was friends yeah, they, with these um, are all the albums that we bought the yeah, HMV yeah. man yeah That's Fallacy's it. from Manchester yeah, yeah is he right yeah yeah he's a good lad Fallacy Black Market Boy I think his, yeah. his thing was called and the, um, album. he done work with Baby J Baby J was the guy who produced We Johnny and he put right. he put that my song We Johnny on his album Baby Food alongside Fallacy and um, everyone Chester P as well. Have you ever heard of Chester P? Task Force. Right. No, they no, were no. sick rappers, bro, back in the day from London, you know. But um, yeah, I did. I loved a lot of the London rap scene. Um, I did, but I, I never really got into the grime too much, you know. Yeah, yeah. Didn't get into grime like at first at all, yeah. and then it was only like afterwards that it's I started to appreciate that. Like it's like 140 and that. And then yeah, was but I do love it now, fast. bro. I'm talking about when I was young. I was yeah, more yeah. like a hip hop guy, you know Aye. what I mean? But um, I was say I love Skept. I did like Skepta, bro. But there was one thing I always thought: what the fuck? <clears throat> did you ever see when Skepta started saying he liked to wear women's clothing? Of recently, yeah, it's, it's, I don't know what that's about. Brother, was that was that like? See, I, bro, I, 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 I just don't, I don't understand, I don't get it. I don't bro, get it. Bro, I just thought, whoa, it freaked me out a bit when I seen the interview. Have you seen his interview? Have you seen the interview? He's at like a, he's at like an awards show or something, and he's wearing some sort of fucking looks guys, like guys like, jeans or something. No, it was crochet. It looked like fucking. Something like your granny would have your, your tea on, you know, like a wee crochet set or something. And that's what he even said. He goes, it's like crochet. And he goes, it's women's wear. And he goes, I've always wore women's wear. I was thinking, right, bro. Like, that's, what? That's, cr that's it's crazy. It's a bit weird, bro. It's yeah. weird, that shit, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's fucking Should Did you see the fucking Grammys, bro? No, I haven't, I, I haven't even got a chance, to be honest. I've had a couple of mad weeks of stuff going on in my life. So, like, you were talking about Andrew Tate before, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I, I seen this Andrew Tate thing. It was think it was Piers Morgan. He was on Piers Morgan's show, Andrew Tate, you know, like about a month ago. And he said, a lot of people are trying to demonize me and saying like I'm this and I'm that and I'm a real bad influence on kids. He goes, All I'm doing is telling them to have a bit of self respect and, you know, you know, like, you know, look after themselves. He says, You've got guys here like little Nas X twerking on the devil. 
selling Satan shoes and telling kids to worship the devil. Mm. You with me? And he goes, and you're demonizing me. Like, there's a lot of... True. Where, and when, he, when I heard that, I thought, the guy has smashed it. I said, it's so true. The Grammys, bro, yeah, this year. I'd never even heard of this guy. There's, a, there's some, like, some Satan-worshipping um, fucking pop idol guy called right. um, Sam Smith. Right. And he says he's not a he, he's a fucking... But Sam Smith has done, like, fucking Latch and all that, all them songs. Yeah, well, his song was Unholy, that he'd done Unholy. Have you heard that Unholy tune? Fucking disgusting, bro. But anyway, he fucking... He'd done some big satanic ritual at the Grammys. But, I mean, full on devil worshipping, you know? And I was thinking, bro, like... I remember when I was, like, 12 or 13, yeah? I used to, like, um... Like, listen to, like, um hidden subliminal messages and songs right. and say like, oh, if you play this backwards and all, you can hear this message and it's a devil worshipping tune and like Hotel California was about the first devil worshipping church and all. And, right. you know, there was loads of like, there was always like, see nowadays, bro, it's just right there in your face. Ah, they don't need fuck. no fu- fucking Billy Eilish singing, oh, good girls go to hell and all that shit. And you think, I've got wee, my, my wee fucking cousin and all sings that yeah. now and she's fucking six. Yeah, you have to, you, ha- you, ha- you have to sort of question where the message is, I suppose. I suppose like, I mean, even you look at like the Cardi B and stuff, like some of her songs, like, and what kind of message is she teaching yeah. younger women? Just talking yeah. about her wet ass pussy. Sure, she became woman you know of the year, you know? She became woman which of the is, year. Which is crazy. Like, And don't get me wrong, obviously, like, I would play them records because they're popular. Yeah, of course. And I'm, I'm paid as a DJ. Yeah. But at the same time, you also got to, like, look at the message that she's giving people. Yeah. And then maybe then also look at the message that, that, that someone like Andrew Tate gives people. Exactly. Which is far less harsher than the exactly. way she says stuff. That's because Andrew Tate is against that, you see. Yeah. That's the interesting thing. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's so fucked up, bro. It's like anything goes unless you're against anything. Mm-hmm. If you're against anything, then you're a bigot and there's, you know, there's something wrong with you and all. But if you just, anything goes, that's literally the mentality yeah. apart from critique. You're not allowed to critique people's, you know, especially like the agenda. You know what I mean, bro? That, uh, bro, you needed to see this shit. Uh, it was fucking unreal. And it's not just the entertainment business either. It's not like it's the Grammys and you're just thinking, yeah, but they're just doing that because they think it's cool. Have you ever heard of CERN? CERN in fucking, where is it? It's in fucking, forget the country that it's in now. It's like some big scientific gaff. Right. One of the big, and they built a big fucking tunnel through the mountains. And there was an opening ceremony to this big fucking tunnel, one of the biggest tunnels in the world. And the ceremony was the biggest fucking... And these are all scientists. And all of the all the world leaders came to the ceremony. It is the biggest satanic ritual you've ever seen in your fucking life, bro. Like, and you're thinking, these are all atheists. Mm. So imagine, like, we're atheists, yeah? We're atheist scientists. We're opening up a big fucking tunnel. Let's get a pure devil fucking ritual. Like, how does it even correlate? It doesn't make sense, bro. I do do think there is, like, he says he's been captured by the Matrix and stuff like that. I do think there is a Matrix. 100%. Something, like, of that nature there. And then, obviously, I think it's come out today, I think you guys were saying earlier, that... um, that he was set up or something like that. I don't know. I was one of the lads. Yeah, they yeah. said they found out to do. Bro, one hundred percent. I'm sure he came up. He came out mm. and he said, yeah, "I'll be fucking yeah. arrested soon." You yeah. with me? They'll try and silence me when they can't. You with me? And then they'll fucking. You know the truth is, I just think, bro. There's um, there's a lot of fucking distraction. You know what I mean? Going on. You know what I mean? Like the big time distractions. Even the year about all that fucking UFOs. They're saying they're shooting down. Yeah, I've seen, I seen some shit about this recently, actually. Brother, again, have you ever heard of Pl- Project Bluebeam? No. Yeah, it's a conspiracy theory. But they're saying, I don't believe in aliens, I don't believe in any of it, I don't believe in space, I don't believe in any of that, bro. But I think anything that they tell you in the fucking TV or anything in the media is 100% fake. Everything, they've pulled the wool over humanity's eyes. I do believe that. I believe... Um, the, 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 and you know that yourself, bro, when you think about education in general. Education, school, you know school does not, is not there to teach you shit. School is a brainwashing camp. That's what it is. Well, the most valuable lessons you learn in day-to-day life, you don't get taught in school. Like. Exactly. And not only that, bro, they don't teach you about fucking taxes, how to set up a business, how to do this yeah. or that. Why don't they ever teach that? Because they want you to be a slave. Yeah. You're with me, bro? They teach you how to be... And and you know what as well, bro? It's not real education. Do you know what it is? But Kanye West has said this for you. Yeah, of course. Well, it's memorise and repeat. 
So if I say to you, bro, memorize and repeat this. For example, you know, your theory test when you do your, you know, your, your driving. Like, it's literally memorize and repeat, memorize and repeat. So, like, if I didn't study on the day of my theory test, I wouldn't have passed because I had to remember it all. Like, it was memorize and repeat. So when it came yeah. to the questions, I remembered it. Guess what? I haven't got a fucking clue now, bro, because I never learned it. I never learned anything. I just memorized it and repeated it. And if you have a good memory and you can repeat what you, that's all school is. You with me, bro? It's yeah. like a, it's fucking disgraceful. Well, I, was there. I got kicked out of school. You know what I mean? I didn't go to no school. And they sent me to Young Offenders then. And that's when I started doing music at that, bro, yeah. you know? It was bad, bad in school, like? Yeah, just because fucking Turn I thought, like I thought school was fucking bad, bro. I How mad was your school with the school you went to? Were you the maddest in your school? They said that I, I went, I went to a raw school. I went, the school in Moss Side, which is the ghetto of Manchester, and um, I was like, it was like predominantly black and Asian, and I was like, there was well, literally for the first two years, I was the only Irish guy in the school, and then um, a wee fella Kenny Col Caldwell came, and he became my mate. He was from the Shanko, no but way. then so I was, I was just me and Kenny. But um, my school was quite ghetto, but they said I was the um, the number one problem student they'd ever had. Right. Yeah, I beat up my teachers and everything, bro. I was mental. Like my school was mad, like, and there was kids I got in my class. Like, it was a couple. They used to fight and stuff, and then it was it got that crazy. <laughs> like one day, I actually remember my first day in secondary school. <laughs> I got on the bus on the way home, and I obviously had new everything new, you know, new school bag and all. It's your first day of secondary school. I got on the bus. Some fucking idiot on the bus decided they were gonna let a firework off on the fucking bus. Yeah. <laughs> so this guy lets a firework off on the bus, poof, hits my bag, it just blows a hole in the bottom of my bag. It's my first day of school, I went home, and my mum was like, what the fuck happened to your school bag? I was like, someone let a firework off on the bus. <laughs> That's how mad my school was. Right, well, but they used to do it in classroom, they used to let bangers off in class, like people would be doing English class, and some boy would be like, a banger off. Like, he's imagine being a fucking teacher, bro. just fucking writing something down, oh fuck, what's going on? Bro, check this. <laughs> This is how fucked up my school was. So um, a, a new kid came in our school, and um, he 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 was in my year, and he asked who the toughest in this class in the school, and you know, in the year was, and they all said it was me. And he says, "Who is he?" Then he wants he wanted to fight me. You with me? So I met him then, but obviously I was a big kid as well. There was a psycho like. So when he seen me, he didn't want to fight me. And he was like, nah, and he became mates with me. And he says, like, who's your, who's the second toughest? And it was one of my mates, but he said, me and you, let's have a scrap. And he started fighting with him and all. He fought every day, this kid, and got expelled. Right. And he was gone from the school. I, I was out, um, I nipped out um, early from school. But, like, I was wagging the last lesson. I was having a smoke. And sure enough, I seen him, but he was expelled. And I says, what are you doing if you were expelled? And he goes, I am, look. And he pulled out, he had about 10, 10 shooters, you know, fireworks. Right. But you know, the ones that go <laughs> bang, 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 you know, like that. And he goes, I'm going to shoot the headmaster. <laughs> and I said, you know, you're not. What? And he said, no, I am. Because every day the headmaster would come out and wave to the kids, you know, to go. And I says, you're not going to do that, bro. And he goes, I am, watch me. And I went, this guy, next thing the bell went. The headmaster comes out and he's waving all the wee kids and my mate just lets the fuse and walks out and went, yo! And the headmaster looks at him and he's boom, boom! Select the headmaster, the headmaster's ducking oh, and running. He hit about four kids, five kids, wee girl and all, he hit and all, she was crying and all, it was no terrible. Like, but I was I'm laughing like, but it's obviously oh, fucking I was mad, bro. I was class, bro. I was thinking this kid is fucking mental. But um, no, my school was nuts, bro. I, I was crazy, bro. I remember in the... Uh, changing rooms I became a I became um, the rugby I was in the rugby team but I was only in third year and I was in the fifth year's rugby team because it was a big lad you know and I was talking to my mates in PE and saying hi you know I've just made the rugby team and the 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 um, the PE teacher he was a substitute teacher called Mr. Small and he goes like that you sure you couldn't run the length of yourself and everyone laughed you know in the changing room and I was like you know, I went all embarrassed, you with me? And I yeah. thought, fuck, he's just dissed me. Like. And as he laughed and said, sure, you couldn't run the length of yourself. And then he turned his back on me. 
And I just thought, fuck this, bro. So I just went, and it was in the changing room, you know, with the tiled floor. So I just clinked his ankles together, clinked and just lifted him, you know, like rugby tackled him, but flipped him upside down by his ankles, went, <laughs> fuck off. And he flew up like that and went, boom, and hit the, hit the fucking, hit the thing, bro. <laughs> And I bust his face yeah. open, bust his whole face open in the fucking changing rooms and all the kids were watching and all. And he was laid there, fuck, and I went and got the um, the mop from the showers, turned the shower on, filled the mop bucket, sat him up and mopped his blood up. And then I said to everyone else in the changing rooms, get out. And then I said to my teacher, I said, listen, I'm on my last warning here. And you, you disrespected me. You were calling me fat in front of my fellow students. I said, so if you ever fucking, if you do anything, like if you grass me up, bro, I'll fucking wait for you outside the school because I'll be expelled. So I'll come for you. Told him I was only like 15. Sure enough. Gangster then, movement, sure 15. Enough, sure like, enough then, bro, what did I'll he find do? Find out where you live. He left the school, bro. Did he? And I'd never got in trouble for it. Never got in trouble for that. Shit himself. He's got as my witness. That is a fact, bro. Then the next time I went for PE, they said, oh, Mr. Small's left the school. We've got a new teacher. That's mad, man. Yeah, but I got kicked out of school, bro, young age, you know. Didn't, um, and then they sent me to the Young Offenders in, in Longsight, and that's when I started making music. Besides the getting your game on then, just learning the, how to, to write in that? Probably. Yeah, I've always been against, like, fucking... I've always struggled with society in general, bro, because I know, like, um, I do know that, uh, like, there is, like, evil people that run the world, and I've known that since I was 12, you know, I remember um, I was 12 years old, bro, and I was hanging about with fucking like 18 year olds and all, and they give us a tape called Shadows, and I talked about the Freemasons and all, and the, you know, the secret societies and how like everyone's connected and, you know, all the politicians are all part of these groups and all, and yeah. I was thinking, and they control the schools and the media and the police and everything that, were, and I was like, nah, it couldn't be true, my dad would have told me about that, you know, I went and asked my dad if it was true and he was like, yeah, that is, and I was like, fuck, no way. do you know what I mean, bro, and then that was me just studying and thinking, what the fuck is going on, do you know, so, um, we met back up then at the Meeks show, didn't we? Oh, yeah, yeah. So with that Meeks in the limelight, the Cali Cave presents Meeks. And you uh, DJed at the Meeks show? Yeah, man, that was sick. That was a sick night. I enjoyed myself big time. Um, obviously, yeah, it was good as well to see a lot of local artists on the bill and um, doing their thing as well. And it's good to see, you know, st shows like that are going to give the local guys an opportunity to come through. 100%, bro, 100%. Meek shouted me, he wants me to um, support him in Dublin. That's crazy. In a couple of weeks. That'll be huge. At his Dublin tour, like he's doing his tour, so I'm going to support him at his Dublin show. I'll have to come down to it, I'll find out what date it is. You sure. should, bro, you if should. it's not at the weekend, obviously the weekend's kind of tired. And then obviously, we've got some big fucking news as well, then we're going to be doing the fucking Snoop Dogg after party. Snoop Dogg, like? Gangs crazy. Shit. Yeah, so it's the 14th, isn't it? Yeah. Tuesday the 14th yeah. of March. After the SSE, yeah, and then we're gonna run on a common market, um, and tickets will be on sale pretty soon for it. Yeah, um, we're gonna have a long list of people on the support for it too. Um, you're on it as well. You're doing the support. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah sick, sick. Yeah, um, I have to meet Big Snoop Dogg, bro. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I have to meet Big Snoop. So, um, <laughs> nah, I'm buzzing for that. He's an icon, obviously. In fact, I would say I would argue Snoop Dogg is at least top. 10. That billboard, you know the billboard? Has to be yes. top 10. He has was to, number 9. Has to be. Snoop was number 9. Has to be. I wouldn't put him in my personal top 10. Like. No, like, I'm, I'm never going to listen to Snoop Dogg before I'm going to listen to a two-pack record. Yeah. Right, but the problem is you don't go looking for Snoop Dogg. He just is on tracks. Yeah, he's on tracks, bro. You know, he's on he tracks. tracks. Bro, he's done tracks with two-pack and everything America's most wanted. Now. Yeah. Ain't nothing but a gangster the party. party. You yeah, know what I mean? Tune, tune. And like, um... You know, um, but, but he's from that era. Obviously, that's iconic levels. Like, yeah. you know what I mean. He's from like when you think of West Coast American rap. That's that. He he's the one of the originals. Yeah, you're thinking of, of him. You're thinking of like N.W.A. Dr. Dre. Tupac. You yeah. You know that's what that's what you think. Hundred percent. You know I'm mean? like, and he was a real kid back in the day. And you know? I remember he had yeah. a murder case and all yeah, against yeah. him and all. That's you right. know. Yeah, no, I'd, say, I'd say he was probably about that life when he was a lot younger. Yeah, I I. I'd, I always find him like, like he was like the epitome of like a pimp rapper, wasn't he? 
You know, when he was young, he was like the slick, yeah, like yeah. pimp, and he would wear the big fur coats and shit. He spoke softly as well. He spoke softly, yeah. like that type of shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, proper, he did. proper chill. Like, yeah. yeah. But then he had his own thing going on, so it wasn't like he was trying to be like everybody else. He was Snoop Dogg. Yeah. He was his yeah, own thing. Yeah, he was. Now, Snoop is sick, bro. Listen, it's next level getting Snoop. I can't wait. What was he called? DJ Snoopadelic or Snoop, something? DJ Snoopadelic. So, like you said about Skepta doing his DJ in the house yeah, thing. Yeah. Now Snoop Dogg's are doing his. So, uh, what is he going to do? Like, do you know what so he's he going to do? So, he does like an, an hour and a half long DJ set. So, like, he's, and is he going to sing his songs yeah, he as does well? A, he does a couple of tracks and he does bits and bobs in and out of songs. So, like, for example, I would say on in his DJ set, he's going to have a load of Dr. Dre records. Like, yeah. You know, think of the Dr. Dre classics like on The Chronic 2001. Yeah. Like you're going to have, like he's going to be playing shit like that, I'd say. You know and I mean? on The Chronic as well, the original Chronic. Yeah, he the had the best. G um, what was it? G thing in yeah, that, Gin and that? Juice. Yeah, yeah. All that kind of stuff. Bad like, boy tracks. And then um, you hear all them songs like that that there used to be on, like even the Nate Dogg songs, like 213. Yeah. Like all them old West Coast tunes, like you can't beat them, I love them. Yeah. I wrote my, we, um, I wrote my top ten, so my top ten. Snoop wasn't in it. This is my top ten. You ready? Go. Oh fuck! Hold on. There was only right. Of all time, is this? Yes. These are my top ten rappers of all time. Number one, Tupac. Number right. two, Big Pun. Number three, met this guy in real life, Sticky Fingers, from Onyx. Right. You heard of him? Heard. But You've heard of Onyx. Heard, but I can't think. Yeah, I met him in real life as well. Rap to him. Um, DMX. DMX, yeah, I put DMX up there, yeah. Master P. Master P, yeah. You heard of Master P? Of course, no yeah. Limit Records? Yeah, No Limit, yeah. Gangster, bro. Killer Priest. What was his son called, Master P's son? What's his son? What's his son called? He used the Rick tracks, I can't remember. I don't so, know about his son, but his brother was called um, C Murder. And um, there's loads of them, bro. My favourite, like, so I had to say Master P is the greatest because he was the general of No Limit. Right, but yeah. there's loads of No Limit that I love, bro. Cain and Abel, Am I My Brother's Keeper? Um, Magic Thuggin. Magic Thuggin is probably one of my all-time greatest albums, bro. Love it. He's a G. So anyway, Master P, the Killer Priest. Have you heard of Killer Priest? He was um, an affiliate of Wu-Tang. Right. So, you know, Jizza. Yeah, you know, from Wu Tang. Right. Um, Jizz's album, Liquid Swords, it was a solo album. He he even put on a, a, a solo track from Killer Priest. Killer Priest was like the the religious y quite rapper, but he was very deep, you know, like spiritual rapper. Yeah. His album, Heavy Mental, next level, bro. So Killer Priest and then Easy E, I said. Easy E. Yeah. Easy E was my um, West Coast guy. You watch that NWA me? movie, actually, and you see Easy E in it. Like, you just and, know he was a G. Like. And you know how you know he was a proper G, too. Because back in the day, remember you said um, 50 Cent wasn't scared of Shug. Yeah. You have to remember Shug was a bit older then too. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. It's, it's, you know, you wouldn't be as scared as well. You know, you're yeah. a young pup and you're thinking, you used to be raw back in the day. You're older now. You're with me. Yeah, I, yeah. You know, when he was in his prime, when Shug Knight was in his 20s, starting up death row like a fucking nut job, Easy E just told him to go fuck himself. Easy was a psycho. Yeah, he didn't care. Easy didn't give a single fuck, nah. bro. Do you know Easy E used to sell his CDs and buy gunpoint? Get people to buy CDs now at gunpoint. Easy E was the real deal, bro. And it was funny because he, you know, he, he spoke about fucking, you know, um, Ice Cube and all the rest of them. And he was saying, well, yous, all use on NWA. None mm. of you fucking broke a law in your life. Yeah. You know me? He goes, I was the ghetto one, and he was, you know me? <laughs> Loved Easy E, bro. Then I have to say, a mortal technique. Yeah, I've heard of a mortal technique. Bro, you need to. Have you never really listened to it? No, but I remember years ago, they were on in a place called Sky Night Club. Yeah, yeah. It's just one guy. That, he's he's oh, a rapper. It was one guy, one guy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He then, but I obviously I didn't. I never made it down, but I remember back then, I didn't know who he was, but everyone was buzzing over him. Like, yeah, do you yeah. know what I mean? It was a big gig that back then, but yeah, it was in, it was in Belfast, actually. Yeah, 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 I know. He did come to Belfast. I wasn't here then, but I remember the interviews and all. The guy who I was doing my shows with got him over, you know? Right. Um, he's a sick rapper, bro. He was sick. And then this other, Cannabis. 
cannabis, yeah, yeah. So Eminem had a beef with him, didn't he? Yes, it? and I met he, cannabis. He used to call him cannabis. Yes. Because he's in one of his songs. Bro, I met him. No, he, bro, do you know do you know the story of it? I met cannabis, bro. Right. And, and um, it was one of the most surreal things ever, bro. But I asked him even all about this as well, what happened. And it was a weird, weird story, bro. So check this. Um, at the time, Eminem was working with Dr. Dre. Right. And cannabis was working with Wyclef Jean and they were both working on their debut albums and the the talk around the town was cannabis is going to be the next big rapper to blow he's working with Wyclef Jean and Wyclef Jean was more popular than Dr. Dre back then because yeah. Dr. Dre had felt like it disappeared for a while after NWA Eminem is what re-sparked you know yeah, Dr. Yeah. Dre's career so while they were working um, Eminem reached out to cannabis and said, would you, do you want to do a track with me? And Cannabis said, no, you know, like shrugged him off and said, I'm too busy, you know, I'm working on my own shit. Then they released their albums. And obviously Cannabis' album, his debut album called Cannabis as well, it's one of my favourites, I love it, but it flopped, like, you know, commercially. Yeah, Didn't, yeah, like, yeah. do that well as expected. Whereas Eminem had, hi, my name is... <laughs> Eminem fucking... Yeah. Eminem, the Slim Shitty LP. Fucking one of the Crazy. biggest rap albums of all time. Yeah. So then what happened, everyone's talking about Eminem, Eminem, Eminem is the number one guy in the world. Cannabis then show, uh, reaches out to Eminem and says, OK, I will do a song with you. And Eminem, like a G, says, yeah, let's do one then. I've always rated you. And he sent them over a track, like an instrumental. And um, Cannabis sent Eminem a track over. Right. And then Eminem goes, I don't like that beat, bro. We'll find another beat, you know. And then he either like, um, said, what about this beat or something? But Cannabis then took offense and wrote a diss track, the Eminem. Oh, that oh, was a, on the track. That was you could they could have been mates and wrote so off. So then the when sunset. he wrote the diss track, <laughs> then Eminem like threw a one liner out about him. Guess what cannabis done, bro? He went and made a fucking album dedicated to Eminem. Fuck like a, a full album dedicated to him. It's called See True Hollywood Stories. And like the opening is about Stan doesn't ever die and uh, cannabis rescues Stan out of the river and Turns him into a, a, a cannabis fan and plots to kill Eminem and all weird shit. But well, I was just like, oh my goodness. You, you, when you think about re them records, even when you look at the old Eminem records, and I and I remember listening to them growing up because obviously Eminem was a huge influence on me. Yeah, like some of the stuff that he said on records then, you could fucking never get away with saying on records. Yeah, now. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like he used to, he, he used to. He used to disrespect gay people. Yeah, but you know, like I'm gonna tell you the truth, bro. If you really want. I'll tell you the God's honest truth. He didn't. I actually think Eminem is gay. I'm going to tell you. No, I do. <laughs> you just can laugh. <laughs> you can laugh. No, I'll tell you this now, bro. So check this. No, I'm telling you the straight up truth. If you actually want to get into it, this is the truth. First of all, have you seen the interview? Have you seen the film, The Interview? No. There's a film called The Interview, yeah? And it's fucking Franco or something. My man, what's his name? No, uh, uh, he's the guy, Franco or something, access it. Anyway, in the interview, you're right, and he's, he interviews Eminem at the start of the show, and Eminem says that he's gay in the interview. And then he's like, I've always, I've left a, a gay breadcrumb trail throughout my whole career. That's what he says in the interview, in this bread. film. What is this, a little fucking dildo or something like that? No, but I'll tell you, bro. So, when I was young, yeah, I got the, the Slim Shady LP. Yeah. Ken Kniff from Connecticut. Yeah, Ken Kniff from Connecticut, yeah. bitch. Yeah, He's right? the same, he's yeah. said all the skits on the then, series. Yeah. Then he goes, um, then he does a tune, he goes, come on, boy, shake that ass. Oops, I mean, girl, 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 girl. You oh, know yeah. you're my world, right? So he says that. Then he says a track, bro, this is, this is a mad one. Then he says in one of the tracks, he goes, all these years, me and Dre have been fucking each other with hats off. It's in his lyric. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. Right? Then he does a fucking love song called I Need a Doctor with Dr. Dre saying, hey, Dr. Dre is his best friend and he saved his life and he loves him and all. And I'm thinking, Raz, bro, you with me? And he has left a gay breadcrumb trail throughout his whole career. That is a fact, bro. You with me? Then he done the track with Elton John. 
Remember? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, done the track with Elton John, True. and Elton John loves him. Elton yeah. John says he's like so, but Elton John was the the yeah. gay ambassador at, the, that, at, so. at that time. Elton John was like we're fucking best mates. Exactly. And the gay community were out to get him. Yeah, and then Elton John fucking stuck his arm around him. It's yeah, all good. Eminem, listen, bro. Sure, you know that Drake. Eminem, all of them are chichis, and you know that, bro, because that's um that's what the government want anyway. You know, it's a, they wanted them gay rappers, bro. So Tupac spoke about it. Tupac spoke about it in his last interview before he got assassinated. Yeah, Tupac said, um, Dr. Dre's upstairs sucking dick and licking pussy. He doesn't know if he's gay or straight. This is Tupac talking about Dr. Dre. You never hear that interview. That was his words, bro. He says they're all at it, bro. They're all in some weird, some sort of fucking satanic orgy shit. You with me? That's what the music industry is. That's what it does, bro. Sure, that's why Sam Smith and all that, you know, you know, they're fucking talking about some fucked up weirdo shit, bro. Sure, even that Demi Lovato and all. Have you ever like listened to the, that? You know, she's got a song called "Unholy Fuck." <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, nah, that's the track, bro. <laughs> Check it, bro. Go on Google and type in unholy fuck lyrics and DJ. read it. And guess what it's talking about? Fuck me like I'm lay on a crucifix. Like every every line, she says something biblical and then something to flip it and do with sex. You with me, bro? So it's like pure, <laughs> like devil shit. You with me, brother? That's crazy. It is, bro. It's really devil. <laughs> and you know what? Like the first one was fucking Lady Gaga. She was like the the the, the first ever fucking succubus to come up and say, like, yeah, I'm here for your kids. Even her name, bro, Lady Gaga. What is Gaga? Yeah, I suppose. Gaga yeah. is baby language, right? And she sings hypnotic nursery rhymes for children. Sexual, satanic, hypnotic nursery rhymes for children. And I knew that, bro, when I seen one of my cousin's daughters <laughs> singing, um, don't think too much, this beat is sick. I want to take a ride on your disco stick. Yeah, yeah. And these are kids singing that, bro. Yeah, yeah. Kids singing up. it. Singing, don't think too much, just ride dicks. Yeah. That's what that's what the words you remember. Some of the messaging in songs is, is insane when you when you when you break it down and then obviously you, you, you kids are singing them as yeah. well. Like even the stuff you hear on the radio. All of the messages nowadays, bro, are fucking raw, bro. Terrible. All again, anti humanity. That's what it is. Mm. It's all anti humanity. And it's all like, you know, you know that bro as well. You just know it. Like they're trying to get people to to literally like go against your your what you know to be real you with me they're mm. getting people to go and pretend live in some fantasy realm you know what I mean it's fucking scary <laughs> bro and it's gonna get worse and worse as it goes on it definitely is do you watch the UFC bro yeah I do actually yeah I went to see McGregor Aldo actually in Vegas before. no you didn't yeah I did yeah fuck off brother yeah yeah you actually, were there live I was going with this girl at the time and I told her I just got tickets to the UFC Yes, I can't believe I've bought them. I've, I've waited ages to get McGregor tickets against Aldo online. They were like 450 quid each. Sick, and bro. then when I said to her on the phone, she was like, oh, that's amazing. Who's going? I was like, well, me and Phil and, and me and Phil were going. And she was just like, what? You didn't get me one? I was like, oh, I'm going. I'm trying to buy you one as yeah, well. Yeah. She totally fell out with me. It was fun. Anyway, went to Vegas, had a class time. Actually, when you go to one of them big fights and you see the scale of them fights, like, you go to the the the, the weigh-ins, obviously, and um, the interviews and whatever press conferences, and they're they're as nearly as big as what the fight is because there's a lot of slobbering, screaming. Of course, especially a McGregor press conference. Yeah. Fuck, bro! When McGregor came onto the UFC, bro, it was it was next level shit, was. brother. And what he done the Aldo was fucking spectacular, it was, it was one of the best things I ever went to. Obviously, the fight didn't last too long, but... Nah, but that's, that's what makes it so yeah, amazing. Really Someone care. said that to me. Someone said to me, like, huh, sat up all night to watch McGregor and Aldo and it's over in 14 seconds. Aye. And I said, yeah, that's what I want, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wanted him to go and staunch him. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. That's what would made it so spectacular, you know yeah. what I mean? And not only that, did you see him in the changing room beforehand? Yeah. He's, and he's practising that. his exact same shot. Bro, no, too sick, The bro. way he set it up was lovely, like it was. Sick, bro. Did you not watch it at the weekend? There was uh, Volkanovski versus Islam. I actually missed it because I was away all weekend, to be fair. I was in Manchester on Friday. I was playing on this club and then... I got back really late on Saturday and shattered down Sunday was in Dublin for the yeah. spring concert. Falkanovski is um he was a rugby player from Australia. Big rugby player, but he's right. lost loads of like he was a small guy, but he was dead big, but he lost loads of weight and 
was um became the featherweight champion and then fought Islam for the lightweight belt and he fucking done Islam in, brother, and then fucking they give it to oh, Islam. So he, oh, he beat Islam? Well, he, he, he technically he's, he's, did. He's but Islam good. won, though. Islam won the fight. Right, so he... I gets, was fuming, bro. They thought him dirty to that, death. That's, uh, what's, what is that, lightweight? Lightweight yeah, Islam? Yeah, yeah, lightweight. 155? Yeah, 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 but the Don, the Don Valk so he's dirty, got that bro. Dagestani wrestling style. Yeah, but it got nullified. Did it? Brother, you need to watch it, yeah? Um, Volkanovski, he was a rugby player, yeah? You can't bully him. And a few times he smashed him. One one round, yeah, that you would give to Islam. Islam gets on his back, snuggles his fucking face into his fucking neck, cuddles him, doesn't do anything the whole round, just yeah. hangs on to him like a fucking koala bear. Yeah, yeah, and you yeah. see Volkanovsky getting angry, punching him, going, for fuck's sake, bro, what are you doing? He goes, you're hanging on for dear life here. You're, you, you know, what, what are you doing to me? And they give that round to fucking Islam. Imagine me and you're going to fight, bro, and I fucking jump on your back and cuddle your neck. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, Why? Well, I don't know. It just it annoys well, the shit you, out of me, uh, bro. Well, I actually trained Brazilian jiu-jitsu for about the best part of about two years. Sick. Yeah, and enjoyed it. Like I love jiu-jitsu, bro. And, uh, you know, obviously you go in, start off as a white belt, and fucking you get tapped out every of fucking course. In, in your sessions but it's good it's good for the mind actually and you yeah. learn a lot of a lot of the sort of movements and stuff funny enough bro, I first went to jiu-jitsu when I was six first went to jiu-jitsu when I was six bro when I was six years old and loved the boxing my dad yeah. bought me this when I was six yeah I've had that on my whole life do you like the boxing love boxing who do you think's gonna win out of Jake Paul and Tommy Fury I think Fury's got it in the bag you're doing that. I do. I think Fury's got the Right, let's have a bet then. Go ahead. Right. <laughs> Jake Paul's going to clatter him. I, I think... I I'll think, bet you what you want. I, I reckon Fury's got it in the bag. I think he... I you just, honestly believe that? Yeah, I do. I think, look, Jake Paul, I've got to give him credit because he's came up when he's done what he's done. But I think, Jake Paul knocked out fucking Tyron Woodley. Flattened him. Five-time yeah, UFC that, champion. But, he beat fucking Anderson Silva. Yeah, but, but Anderson Silva isn't an old middle-aged MMA fighter. He was the fucking greatest of all time yeah. MMA fighter. And he had just come off a spectacular win but, in boxing. But is he not like 60? 59? No, he's not 59. He was like 50, 49. 50. Huh? Is it all road? Is what? Is it all road? Is it all road? Real. Real. 100% it's real, bro. What, do you think that Tyron Woodley fucking... I watched the fight, bro. I've watched him fights my whole life. My, that was, that's a real fight, bro. Of course, Tyron Woodley didn't take a dive. Of course, the, five-time the, UFC champion, bro. Yeah, no, sorry, yeah. He's, the, the Silva's 47. Yeah, so, 47. But it's still... Yeah. Jake, Paul, Jake Paul is 26. Of course. There's a significant difference in fitness. Of course fitness. there is, obviously. So I think, personally, look, if he was fighting an Anderson De Silva that was 26, I think De Silva wipes the floor with him but uh, honestly you know it's a different sport I, I've, I'm completely honest like I've, I've tried both of them I've friends that fight professional boxing and have done for years and then obviously I've got friends that pro fight professional MMA mm -hmm. I'll be friends with like James Gallagher you know him yeah James, of course yeah, obviously yeah. the Strabanimal Strabanimal but you know him yeah, you're yeah, friends with him yeah, yeah. fucking love the Strabanimal yeah, bro yeah, I was always supporting him yeah. uh, he got a lot of stick yeah. because he, he like was a bit like McGregor yeah. but the truth is if anyone was ever allowed to be it was him yeah. he fucking trained with him since he was a kid that's true yeah you're with me and of course yeah. you'd look up to him like I don't know but uh, the outside world they just seen him as like ah oh, you're trying to copy McGregor but he wasn't he was a uh, fucking animal what is he doing there is he not in the UFC no more so um, yeah no he, he's in um, he's in Bellator the promotion Bellator yeah, yeah, so he yeah. has a fight coming up oh he was so, never in the UFC yeah, was he no he was never yeah in. yeah obviously he wasn't. Um, but yeah he's he's in Bellator obviously and um, his last fight actually in the U, in the O2 in Dublin I went to and he could beat obviously um, and then he does in America now I haven't seen James in a while but no, we would we made him be tight. He's a good guy and legend of a fellow. A real humble kid. Uh, he gets too much. He, uh, personally speaking, I think he gets too much stick. Of for, course he does. Doesn't deserve it, man. He's yeah. a, he's a young guy. He's what twenty six or whatever, and or younger. And realistically, James has, you know, he's made that himself. He's selling out arenas. Twenty six, mate. 
I said, gee, I love him, bro. I thought like, he was a gangster. You, you got, like, people got to give him credit, really, for where he is. Like I said, it, it was all because of McGregor, you see. That's why, yeah, you yeah. know, you know his link with McGregor. Of course. And then he's Irish, and he was, he was just thinking. And he was watching McGregor and then thinking, right, I know what to do. Remember, he said, like, I can go all night or something. Yeah, and he's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. everyone's like, what's but, that, you but, know? But, 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 but I get it, though. I think what people need to think from the boxing per perspective is the promotion and stuff, that a closed mouth won't get fed. So if you're promoting your own fight, you yeah. got to see it as like a, an entertainer. Yeah. Like if I sit here and you ask me, oh, Tez, you've already playing tonight. Uh, what are you doing? And I go, oh, I'm just playing a few songs. Right? Exactly. Saying, I'm fucking playing an alibi and I'm playing exactly. this. Playing. Then you're going to be, okay, well. So and then you've some, some people, the and some people have that naturally. Like McGregor, yeah. he just said it, bro, with a passion. Yeah. Whereas he's sort of saying it because he knows that's what you need to do, you know. He's got the, the showmanship, yes. the, you know, to try yeah, and of course. incorporate it all, sell tickets. He was a Gino, yeah, he was hard as fuck, the strip animal, bro. So, I loved him. So the Jake Paul thing, I think, I have Tommy because I think, look, Jake Paul has fought good fighters. He's not fought a proper boxer yet. Yeah. I do think Anderson, Anderson De Silva has fought professional boxing fights, but in my opinion, you know, he is too old to be stepping in a ring with a guy's 26. Yeah. He's going to outmaster him. Do, yes. I, do I think an Anderson De Silva with a full tank who was 26 could have... Stayed in the ring longer with him? Absolutely. Of course. He'd be a lot sharper. Yeah, 100%. So, Listen, everything you're saying, I agree with. You know, I don't agree with the the this narrative that Jake Paul is just some shit fucking YouTuber. No. Who, listen, the guy is pulling the wool over everyone's eyes. He's and he is a market, he is a genius marketer, bro. Yeah. Next level. And you know what? He is putting in the fucking work. I he's guarantee work. you, bro, he will knock out fucking Tommy. Well, if he does, he'll get, he the, he'll, get the, he'll get the credit for being an actual boxer now. Exactly. But he hasn't got that yeah. just yet. Because I've seen Joe Rogan going mental at some guy on his show where he was saying that Tommy isn't a real boxer. Yeah. And Joe was going, ballistic saying he is a fucking real boxer yeah. and I agree I wouldn't ever disrespect Tommy and say he's not even a good but listen he is he's a real boxer and if Jake Paul beats him a young lad who's a mm. real boxer from a fighting family his fucking brother is the best boxer in the world I'd say like you look at the, the likes of even fighters from here like you know guys that, like Tommy McCarthy from here like he's cruiserweight I think Tommy McCarthy I think he is cruiserweight yeah like if he fought someone like Jake Paul he would fucking Knock him clean out. Do you know what I'm yeah, saying? Of course. So like, there's hundreds of boxers. You know, I think I think people get disillusioned as to where he is, his ability is. I do think he's fucking very. He's done very well in such a short space of time. Like, yeah. you have to give him credit. The guy's yeah. worked his balls off. You can yeah. obviously tell the way he fights, the way he throws his stance. You know, he's. He throws clean punches. He yeah. looks good. He's he's explosive. He's yeah. strong. He's actually. He's quite a big guy as well. Big guy. He's big, quite a big guy. Yeah, deceivingly big he is. Do you know what I'm saying? Like even, he definitely I've is. I actually seen him there in a video with Charlie Slough because Charlie Slough gave him the, 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 a, the AU I've seen it, bro. Yeah, it's bro, I'm yeah. not going to lie to you, right? I know that Jake Paul's growing on people now and they're all starting yeah, to be like, I always read him, bro. They're on his dick now. But I always read him, you know. Yeah. I mean, from when he first agreed to fight Tyron Woodley, right? Right. I thought, nah, he's a G. I thought... Brother, think about it, bro. Listen to me. Imagine, yeah, you're just a YouTuber, yeah? You're famous off YouTube. Would you ever fucking say, five-time UFC champion, let's fucking go for the whole world? Yeah. And you can, that's not sparring or a fucking yeah. charity match. This is a real thing. Bro, you have to yeah, give the yeah, guy you have prop. To, you have, you have so when I respect. seen that as well, I thought, this kid, bro, he is a fucking G. I think if you bring a lot of them, them MMA, MMA guys to boxing gyms, though, they're gonna get shown up in a in a boxing ring yeah. against the boxer, and obviously Jake Paul had been focusing just on boxing, so I think that, that bearing in mind, you know, like he's done exceptionally well for, in a short sports short space of time. Eddie Hearn always says it actually when you hear him talk about it all. He always says like you know you got to give his hat off. He's done well, but he'll never be a Canelo. He'll never be a world champion. Yeah, if Jake Paul disagrees, but it'd be interesting to see how it goes because he's actually decided he's gonna fight an MMA fight here as well. Who? Hey. Jake Paul. I've heard about that. So, this is what I love about him, bro. So this would be interesting. Yeah. And if he does fight an MMA fight, I don't know whether or not how that'll go. Bro, do well, I don't know if you know this, but Jake Paul was a, a decorated wrestler. Ah, yeah, 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 he was so, like a, he was good in high school and all. Bro, I don't know. I think he's highly um 
he, but he does it himself. You see, he wants everyone to underestimate him because he's a he's the best troll going. You have me like you know when it comes to wanting to wind someone up. Yeah, no one can oh, fuck with the, him. He's, he's the worst. Uh, yeah. He's, he's, Straight on to Dana White about slapping his missus. Oh, uh, bro. And I love Dana White, bro. I'm Have you watched that slap games, actually? Bro, I fucking hate it. It's crazy. And like, I despise it, bro. Do you know what does my head in? I hardly follow anyone on Instagram because I like to keep it, you know, just the... Yeah. But I follow the UFC. Right. And every fucking other post now, it's a big slap fucking league. Uh, I hate it, bro. Do you think Dana White made that up to fucking try and sell the slap games? Like, right. Or so I'll tell you why, bro. I'll tell you why I hate it, right? First of all, like, if we were having a competition, right, like who's the toughest, right, I wouldn't say to you, right, go on, clean crack in the nose. <laughs> Slap me. You're like, you know what I mean? Like, what? <laughs> like, for the, the art of fighting is supposed to be, I'll hit you and you're not going to hit me. You're not going to be able to. I'm too swift, too elusive. You with me? But all that's out the window. And, and did you see the guy who won it? Fucking has permanent fucking face. Oh, listen, the, fa the faces them guys give themselves insane so even after the first slap it's crazy yeah. just but I was watching one and I uh, had a friend around recently we were watching it and we were laughing because these two guys went at it and you're not allowed to when you throw like a hook you can, you're obviously supposed to twist your, your heel or you turn into it yeah. right but obviously when they're throwing these they're not allowed to twist they have to their, their feet need to stay straight Yes. So if they're slapping, they're not allowed to twist their, bo their body yeah. in it. Their, yes. their, their feet can't lift off of the floor for yeah, the extra power. And their hand has to be behind their back. The so other the, one. the first guy goes, and he just goes, Phew, knocks a boy completely down. They're like, fire, you twisted your feet. So the other guy gets up, and he's fucking all over the place, and his face is fucked because he's just been slapped. He's obviously been knocked out from the slap. Yeah. He gets up, and he, he just goes, is that right? Well, phew, he does the exact same thing, knocks him out. But he twists, so he, he's like, no, that's a foul. So then he gets up again, slaps him, phew, and he was like, no, that's a foul. And so he knocks him down again. He gets up the next time round, just slaps him, and then the other fact, guy hits the floor. But don't bear in mind, his face is fucked because they foul each other I'm three times. They foul each other three times. <laughs> it's fucking. Bro, the call it a sport is pathetic because it's not like, I don't know. Like I said, bro, like, so say if I'm the best slapper in the world and you're the best slapper, <laughs> the best slapper in the world. and you're the best slapper, yeah, and you're the best slapper, <laughs> you, right? Like it all depends on who goes first, then. Yeah, you with me? Because if I, if I, if like we're the two greatest, then it's all about the flip of the coin. Yes, I get to go first. Sit down. Good night. You with me? And you don't get to slap me then because you're fucking <laughs> you concussed. To, exactly. What's the, what's the logic in that? Where is the fucking logic? And how do you know who's the best? You don't know yeah. who's the best because one of them's going to have to get slapped first yeah. unless you're to say who's the quickest to slap. The, or something. The, do you know what I mean? the damage on the face is arguably as bad as actual, like a proper, proper scrap. And obviously it's the slaps they're doing. I right? just fucking wish, right, that the UFC would stop fucking promoting it on their fucking page. It's not MMA. Yeah. I yeah. watch UFC for MMA. Yeah. That, that's fucking slap leagues. Nothing to do with MMA. So yeah. I don't know why I fucking promote it on their page. You with me? No, it's crazy. Right, it's listen, we're going to wrap it up anyway, my bro. Yeah. It was fucking good. I enjoyed it, my bro. Yes, You're mate. a G. Thanks, we'll bro. see you soon. We talk some shit there, didn't we? Like? Yeah, just slabbering, bro. Just slabbering. <laughs> that's what the show's called. Just slabbering. <laughs>